So now in the last lecture we discussed about the ultrasound attenuation uh, in a metal okay and here we see that uh, here in this region uh, so here are your quartz crystals your piezoelectric transducer and detector okay and here you place a tin rod okay this is the incoming pulse where you have a pulse sent in uh, with uh, a, pa a pulse width of around uh, 200 times uh, cycles per second so this is about uh, 5 milliseconds i guess this would be the time interval between 200 this thing and each of these pulse is made up of 10 megahertz uh, this thing so they, these are 10 megahertz cycles okay each of these pulse is 10 megahertz which oscillates this this thing and so the first pulse comes in oscillates this piezo and this sends in the vibration and this multiple reflection inside the this thing and this generates a pulse now let us look at just the incoming pulse which is this and one of the pulses which is detected at the output okay so it has got absorbed so this was the initial height of the pulse and this pulse height is now so there is an absorption in the height so this is that uh, there is an absorption and this is what we will look at namely how much is the pulse uh, and we will basically look at this uh, signal only you can see that there is going to be an absorption of the incoming wave inside absorption of energy of the incoming wave so it will reduce in height okay and this is a typical setup where you have a crystal uh, it's a pretty large crystal which is is with these are your uh, transducers and detectors so one is a detector one is a piezo crystal which is a detector and one is the uh, uh, actuator which will actually cause the vibration and uh, along a certain crystallographic orientation of the crystal you can send in the vibration you can either send it across this plane now it is along the diagonal of this cube okay so along different orientations you can send in you can also cool this uh, below its transition temperature and this is some experimental setup which actually shows this okay so this is how you can do the measurement now let us look at some data old data which uh, was taken in a tin sample uh, as you cooled it below its transition temperature so tin has a superconducting transition of 3.73 kelvin so the first view graph shows the signal in the oscilloscope at 3.79 kelvin you have sent in if you recall uh, if this is your excitation pulse initial excitation pulse this is the pulse which is coming at the detector end this is the pulse at the detector and we are not looking at multiple reflections we are just looking at the first reflection just looking at the first signal so if you are above tc then the sample has so much of um, attenuation that you don't see anything at all this is zero you don't uh, actually you cannot resolve it in these old experiments you couldn't resolve a peak now you go below seven point uh, so now you start cooling it down now the moment you are just below tc 3.49 kelvin okay uh, you see that there is a sick pulse which develops so the attenuation or the extent of attenuation which was present has now it was almost completely attenuated but now you see that the signal suddenly recovers so from a flat this which was absolutely flat as you cool below tc a signal develops this is just below tc uh, these two view graphs from here to here actually it's the same temperature it is just with a different amplitude am amplifier settings that if you with a low amplifier setting you will see a lower pulse but it is still there okay now if you cool below you can see this pulse slowly start to develop as you are going lower and lower you can see that the pulse is becoming sharper and stronger okay so the pulse is getting stronger and stronger as you are going lower in temperature and you see a very entry uh, uh, so the pulse as you go lower and lower in temperature it becomes deeper and deeper and so there is the power absorbed alpha which is the power absorbed to power input this is showing that the alpha is tending to zero the amount of power being absorbed from the incoming wave is progressively decreasing as you are going deeper and deeper into the superconducting state 
okay so if you look at the alpha so this is very important that the amount of uh, power being absorbed by the material actually decreases from the wave the amount of power being given up to the electronic state or to the electrons inside the crystal is decreasing as you are reducing the temperature below its transition temperature okay and this is seen more clearly when you measure the alpha okay uh, from multiple waves if you calculate the decay of those waves as i had shown you earlier and you can measure alpha if you measure alpha as a function of temperature then what you can see is in aluminium they showed that above tc the alpha is very high okay the alpha is almost one completely attenuated and as you go below the transition temperature the alpha sharply drops to zero it almost becomes completely zero so the attenuation below the superconducting transition temperature actually the power absorbed from the wave goes to zero the power which is absorbed is given to the electrons inside the system which which cause an excitation inside the system however that is seeming to go to zero there is almost no power being absorbed that means the electron phonon interaction because of which the energy is transferred from the wave to the electron is going to zero so the electron phonon interaction because of which energy from wave is transferred to the electrons is tending to zero as t goes below tc okay so therefore electron phonon scattering is vanishing and therefore the resistance in the system should also vanish because resistance occurs because of electron phonon scattering there is a scattering of electrons from uh, phonons which leads to resistance inside material if the electron phonon uh, scattering decreases your resistance will also fall and so this is in some sense consistent okay how does it show and why does it occur what is the reason that there is a weakening of this energy being absorbed why is no energy being absorbed from the wave now to understand that we need to look at it a little bit more carefully so let's look at this feature a little bit more carefully so let me go back and explain this point a little bit more carefully i'll be a bit quick out here okay this will uh, require a bit more closer understanding now now let us come to the concept of density of states you know that this is the electronic density of states g of e in a metal free electron gas this is the density of states e raised to half for a three dimensional metal and this is your fermi energy below which everything is occupied the electrons occupy all the states and these are empty vacant states these are empty states and these are filled states now the phonons carry an energy h cross omega these are the phonons which are carrying an energy h cross omega so when a phonon with energy h cross omega gives an energy to the electron it will go from an occupied state to an empty state by carrying by taking this energy h cross omega from the wave it will get excited from an occupied state to an empty state then only the transition can occur now where will these transitions occur can these transitions occur here is it possible that by uh, this h cross omega is very small so can these energy exchanges happen here this is not possible because there are no vacant states available this is an occupied electron it cannot go from an energy state here to an energy state here by absorbing h cross omega this this is h cross omega this is not possible you cannot absorb any energy of h cross omega and make a transition far away from the fermi energy level so where is such transitions possible these transitions are only possible very close to the 
Fermi energy because for these electrons they can move from by absorbing h cross omega they can move from filled states to vacant states these are all vacant states so these will absorb energy so absorption of energy from the wave will occur very close to the fermi energy level okay now to calculate the net transition rate we will need to calculate the transition probability from e to e prime where e prime is a state e is a state just below the fermi energy to e prime which is a state above the fermi energy and it goes from e to e prime state by absorbing a phonon in the system so the transition probability to go from e to e prime is proportional to the density of states at e into what is the occupation probability of e which is the fermi dirac distribution into g of e prime into 1 minus f e prime this is the density of states at e and this is the probability that e is occupied g of e prime is the density of states at e prime namely how many number of states what is the number of states available at e prime into the probability that e prime is vacant because only if the e prime state is vacant only if this state is vacant this e prime state only if this e prime state is vacant can there be a transition so therefore we multiply it by 1 minus e prime if f e is the probability that this f e prime is the probability that e prime state is occupied then 1 minus e prime is the probability that this e prime state is not occupied so therefore this is the joint probability the transition rate is the joint probability to go from e to e prime it is the joint probability e to e prime is the joint probability that uh, it depends on the density of states at e into that uh, this state has to be occupied so you have f of e what is the probability that e state is occupied that is f of e and then there is the other probability g of e prime into this okay similarly there is the opposite probability that you can have the opposite case what is the probability of going from e prime to e is proportional to that e prime what is the density of states at e prime into f of e prime because e prime has to be occupied so you have the probability that e prime is occupied into g of e then now it is going to the lower energy state from the e prime state it is going to e state so this energy what is the density of states available at e into 1 minus f of e this is the probability that there are 1 minus f of e this term is the probability that there are vacant states available only then the reverse prop transition is possible so again this is the joint probability of joint probability of the density of states at e prime probability that e prime is occupied this is the density of states at e and this is the probability that e is not occupied okay only then you can have the reverse transition and then the net transition rate is proportional to the probability of going from e to e prime minus the probability of going from e prime back to e okay and this transition this net transition rate is going to be related to g of e g of e prime into 
f of e minus f of e prime. If you take the above expressions for this w of e to e prime and w of e prime to e and substitute it, then you will get the product of the density of states into the density of the occupation probabilities of e and e prime. If energy e is equal to capital E, e prime is e plus h cross omega because by absorbing a phonon of h cross omega you will be exciting to the state e plus h cross omega so this e prime is e plus h cross omega Re remember this so therefore the power absorbed depends on this transition rate and it also depends on the transition matrix g of e g of e prime f of e minus f of e prime d of e okay where this is e prime minus the hamiltonian of electron phonon interaction the strength of the electron phonon interaction okay so this gives the overlap okay this gives the strength of coupling e and e prime states through the electron phonon interaction this will actually control how strongly the wave will actually transmit the energy from the electron to the phonon okay so it, this is the transition matrix this is the transition which connects e and e prime states and therefore the net power absorbed will depend on the net power absorption coefficient alpha will depend on this transition matrix overall will depend on this transition matrix uh, and this net transition probability from e to e prime which depends on the density of states at e and e prime and the difference between the probability occupation probability at these two states now f of e minus f of e prime you can approximately write it as and where e is capital e the energy e and capital e prime is e plus h cross omega so alpha is related to alpha is related to integral of m square g of e g of e plus h cross omega f of e minus f of e plus h cross omega d of e now this f of e minus this is a typical uh, thing which is used in uh, condensed matter physics that uh, the Fermi Dirac distribution f of e minus f of e plus h cross omega okay will be of the order of minus delta f by delta e the derivative of the Fermi Dirac distribution into h cross omega the difference in the energies this difference in the two energies is h cross omega so it's a derivative into h cross omega it's roughly of this order okay and this is a like a delta function remember that the fermi dirac distribution if the fermi dirac distribution at the fermi energy this will give rise to a delta function this derivative is actually a delta function at ef okay so if i put that in here this is a delta function at e minus ef then alpha will be of the order of m square g of ef the whole square because these two now are at ef okay both of these are approximately at ef so it's a square of the density at the fermi level into h cross omega the phonon energy which is being absorbed so the energy to the absorption depends on how much is the density of states at the fermi level and the strength of the electron phonon interaction okay and because of this you will have electrons which are present at the fermi level which will absorb energy and go across the fermi level in a normal metal but when will alpha decrease alpha will decrease if when will alpha decrease alpha decreases when 
the density of states at the fermi level drops and the alpha goes to almost zero at t less than tc which implies that the density of states at the fermi level becomes almost zero when t goes to tc and this corresponds to the opening of a gap in the density of states below the superconducting transition this is something we have already looked at when we looked at specific heat this experiment actually gives a beautiful demonstration that because near the fermi energy so these are all occupied states and these are vacant states because there is an opening up of a gap around the fermi energy now electrons electrons these are the states which are available they cannot absorb energy these electrons cannot absorb energy and they cannot take h cross omega and get excited into these are not allowed these excitations are not allowed because there are no energy states available around ef for the electrons to occupy okay only if you give an energy which is larger than the gap can they enter into vacant states however for small excitations in energy there can be no absorption of h cross omega so small h cross omega cannot be absorbed and because small h cross omega because small h cross omega cannot be absorbed alpha goes to zero so this gives the idea that there is an opening up of a gap in the density of states there is an opening of a gap in density of states and this opening of a gap leads to h cross omega from the wave not being absorbed if h cross omega is small enough and therefore the power absorbed from the wave goes to zero and this is this was a very important uh, discovery that showed which actually proved that there is actually opening up of a gap in the density of states okay so if you look at the amount of power absorbed in the normal state it is quite high but the moment you go below tc this is another material you see that the density the power absorbed gradually goes to zero because there is an opening up of a gap in the density of states you cannot have electrons which can be excited into this region inside this gap region this only way to excite it is if you can excite it with a larger energy and take it from below the gap to above the gap where there are vacant states but within the gap there are no available states so this meant that there is an opening up of a gap in the density of states and this was a very important experiment which led to the idea that superconductivity corresponds to an opening up of a gap in the density of states